Welcome to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. It is PFL Champions Week. There's been worse settings for interviews, haven't there? This is about as good as it gets, I'd say. I'd say you what? I don't want to rub it into the people back home. I know that the weather isn't the greatest. I know that there's been a storm <laughs> in Manchester. But it's 35 degree heat. It's 11 o'clock in the morning and we're sat in a jacuzzi, lad. God bless. God bless for this life because you wake up. You know, you wouldn't even think I'm in the middle of a wake up, would you? Like, look at the energy levels. Do you know what I mean? And when something's meant to be, it's just meant to be, mate. You've, uh, obviously, I saw you last night, and even talking to you in the build-up to this particular fight, you've had a smile on your mush. You did a bit of the camp in Dubai. Yeah. Cleared off to Thailand. Finished in Dubai. Yeah. And then come back out to Saudi at the start of the week. Yeah. I would have imagined that weight would have been a little bit of a nightmare to maintain with all that flying around and what have you, but you seem to be in unbelievable spirits, let's just say. I think, I'm not 100% sure, I'd have to check the data, but I think it's the lightest I've ever woke up at this stage. I th I'm pretty sure. Um, so that just shows you it's a testament to where I'm at, mm. how hard I've trained, how professional the camp's been, how good the nutrition is. And uh, just how bad I want to take this second belt and make history. What? What has kept you going? Do you mean the question? The reason why I'm asking you that, right? This is what fourth season now of PFL. Yes. Yeah? Fell short against Mobley first time round. Correct. Won it second time round. Yeah. Biggest night of your career. Got a few quid in your back pocket. Everybody's having a party. You came back for a third go, and it didn't go well. Yep. What brought you back for a fourth go? Mate, I would love to give you that answer if I knew inside what it was. It's just. Uh, like, I thought it was a financial thing why I was doing this thing, and it's clearly not. It's an itch that's not been scratched. Mm. Um, you know, I just knew there was a few miles left on the clock, and I thought, do you really want your topology to end on a red? I did. <laughs> is that what it How is? How mad's that? I thought, <laughs> what, you're going to close this chapter on a loss? For those that don't know what topology is, it's a website yeah. where fighters' records are, and you get greens for wins, reds for defeats. And you didn't want a red at the end. Who wants to end on a red? Like, like OK, you've had this great career. Um, you've won a load of dough and all that. But you know, you know. Because you would have been forgiven if you'd have, if you'd have, got, know, if you'd have mate, gone out at that win. Mum's there and all that. Yeah. You've got the dough. Everybody goes, mate, what a career. You made the right decision. You went to the right place. You finished on a high. Sweet. But then you came back. And then, obviously, it didn't go well. Yeah. But to come back again. But you know what it is, Adam? It did go well. I fought Marlon straight after. Stopped him. Yeah. Like, UFC type, type, type of names that I needed to start beating was Marlon at that stage. You know, guys that have been around the UFC, guys that have got a big name, so that was. But then they give me an unknown guy that come from the, the ghetto in Peru, mate, and turned out to be an absolute world beater. Mm. And he caught me flush and give me 10 months away from the sport. And I literally said to myself, I'm not even going to spar again. You know, after I got knocked out, yeah, I said to myself, I'm never even going to spar again. That was my mindset originally. That never, for those that don't know your career, that had never happened to you? Never you even been dropped, inspiring, nothing. And like, so in order to come back and get my head around what had happened, when you have got over a million quid in your account, to still want to do it after being knocked out, that was probably my biggest moment where it was like, okay. And the only reason I ever sparred again six months later was because Connor rang. If Connor didn't ring, I wasn't even going to wow. spar again. Yeah, I know I didn't even know if you knew that, but... I didn't know that that was the reason that you got back in. I knew that obviously you sparred him, but I didn't know that that was the reason that you got back in. I'd not been... Just the opportunity to have a little bit of a role around it was. I, I, I'd, I'd been knocked out, and then you read all these things online about getting knocked out and yeah. how your life's over, basically. You know what, Google will just let your head run away with itself. Um, and, and all the years of fighting, so I thought, nah. So then... Did you feel you'd been a bit gun-shy? In, 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 in the fight? In the fight with Pinedo? In, in anybody, in any fight. When you've been knocked out like that, do you think then, when you're processing it all, that am I going to be the same fighter again? Am I going to be able to put myself in the fire? Right, so, yeah, so this is what happened, right? So I, I had the knockout, then I told him, I, like, I remember sitting in the back with Ross Pearson and all that, and I was like, what happened? And then I always used to think to myself, what's it like to watch on YouTube or watch yourself get knocked out? Because you remember, like, Terry Etham got knocked out yeah. with a spinning hook kick out. I used to think, how does Terry feel when he watches that? So after watching it, I thought, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, just got knocked out, is it? I've knocked 17 people out, so stay in the shower long enough, you'll get wet, won't you? So I got wet, and then um, and then I was like, right, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. I was happy, I was traveling the world, I was living my life a little after Pinedo. It was almost like the break that I needed to have. And then got a 10 o'clock message of Conor McGregor, PM. 
mm. fancy some rounds. And I thought, I'm not passing this opportunity up. Why would I? Went down there, ended up having it with him. Full on fight, yeah, like pretty much going for it, 100% me and him. Took about four or five left straights to the chin when he's about 80 kilo, 80 kilo at best. Do you know what I mean? And I thought, oh, the chin still works. And then I'd got over that hump in my head of every time I get clipped, now, I'm going to fall over. Yeah. And it's almost like I needed to test it. And there was no better man to test it than one of the best knockout merchants in the game. Got over that hump. Then obviously PFL started ringing. Yeah. So do you fancy another go? And I thought, no, nah, I'm not doing that tournament again. So then I said no. And then they were like, well, I'll be honest with you, Bren, like, if you don't do the tournament, we might not be able to give you a fight, so we don't know. It was just all up in the air. Right. So my mindset was, I'll just be honest now, because we're near the end of it. I'll just do one at a time. I'll just do the first round, see how I feel. Second round, see how I feel. First fight, 62 seconds. Might as well do the second one. Second fight, felt great. And I thought, well, I'm in the semis now. <laughs> then well, I was in the semis. Only two fights away from another million quid. Let's now, rock and roll. Now I'm sat with you chatting about the final again. <laughs> so that was the journey, mate. That was Brendan's mindset. And... Um, if there's a message I want to deliver for that, it's me. Just grab your bollocks and give it a go again because I was like, this all never nearly happened because of my own dead. Do you know what I mean? Is, is, your, is your strongest asset what goes on between your ears? In a good way or a bad way? In a good way. Because I look at your career. There's been bumps. And I'm sure when all this started, there were dreams of UFC. Yep. We all know what happened on that journey. Yep. There's been bumps on this journey in the PFL. But I think the thing that sets you apart, just from observing you from a lot of people, is the way that you react to adversity. Adversity is going to happen, man. Mm. In life, in general, mm. fight sports especially. Like you just said, if you go in the shower for long enough, you're going to get wet. There's going to be adversity. It's how you react to that. And that, as I observe, don't get me wrong, you've got a fantastic physical mm. skill set. But what goes on between your ears, mm. I think, sets you apart from others. I mean, it has to, mate, being in the PFL, fighting four times every seven months, yeah. <clears throat> you have to be an animal mentally. Um, and I think being in this organisation for five years, mate, it changes you as a person and as a fighter because guess what? You miss one date in any of them tournaments, it's over. Yeah. So I knew I couldn't miss any dates. And trust me when I say I've gone in bust up in fights, yeah, bust it and still managed to win. So you are right, it does come up to what's between the ears. How... How difficult is the uh, the change that you've got to make in order to prepare for a tournament? Because, again, for people that don't know too much about this, if you're just watching UFC or you're watching some other organisations, fighters don't necessarily know when they're going to fight. Mm. They have a fight booked. They don't know when the next one's coming after that. You know that once you sign up, yeah. if you keep being successful, you're having four in the space of, what, eight months? It's well, one after the other. Like I said, just, just to touch on an earlier point to give it a broader picture... Um, when the UFC thing happened, um, that was a massive spin of my head because in 2019, right, there was nowhere else to go. Bellator yeah. wasn't doing too much. PFL wasn't a thing. Mm. And it's almost like the big man had gone, nah. Uh, over. And when the big man says, nah, it's nah, it's over. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I'm sat there now twiddling my phone thinking, wow, I've worked all these years to get to this moment. Might I add a one, a one and look good doing it? Yeah. So then I'm thinking, what the f what do I do from here? Where do I go? And then PFL got on the phone. I had to Google what's PFL. You know what I mean? Then, yeah. Well, you were at the start. I was. I mean, people know what it is now, but you yeah. were at the start. Thank you. you. First ever English person in there. You know, rolled the dice with them. They rolled the dice with me, and we grew as a company. Yeah. You know, now you got Engano and Jake Paul and all that. So, leading on to the next point, I became a tournament fighter. Right. I remember it was July. I'll never forget this. July, they got on the phone. I had one championship. I had Bellator. I had um, KSW. I had all offers because everyone knew what has just happened on that show. That kid's amazing. He talks well. He fights well. His record speaks for itself. I was 19 and 2 at the time. It's like, what are we talking about here? So then he ended up getting on the phone with PFL. I'll never forget the call with Pete Murray. It was July. And he goes, I'll give you two fights for the end of the year. For any mind, it's July. I'm like, what? And then you're going to have four in seven months next year. And as a fighter, everyone talks about, I want to be active. Yeah, yeah I want to be active. Yeah, but do you? Yeah. What do you want to be active? Do you want to be really, really, are you ready to get active? Because all these PFL guys, yeah, and there's plenty, 
that have come over from other organisations that talk about activity, when it's thrown in your face, mate, it's a shock. good luck. Yeah, yeah. Good luck back-to-back -back training camps, good luck going into injuries, good, good luck weight cuts, four back-to-back. -back. It's all well and good saying it, mate, but once you get over it, it's a different ball game. And I just feel like now, you're getting the best version of Brendan in his this tournaments. This is who you are. Yeah, man, because I just know how to do it now. Yeah. I'm watching half of these guys with their first rodeos and I'm thinking, yeah, it's not easy, is they're it? On, they're on the treadmill over the back of the camera cutting weight and you're sat here in a jacuzzi. For the fourth like... time this year, Adam, and they used to doing it once a year, maybe twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not easy. No. Um, the fighting question, Timo yep. Kizirev. Yeah. As you, um, Maybe this is a little bit too forward of a question. Obviously, you've been in there 35 times as a pro. Mm. 36 coming up Friday night. Where does he rank when, it, when you're looking at toughness of guys that you're facing? Mm, well, he's got to be up there, because he? he's undefeated, but I have fought many undefeated fights, and I have also been undefeated myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's like all these interviews yesterday, I mean, one of them was just like, mate, who give you a mic? He's like, what are you going to do, mate? Well, I'm going to fight him. Do you think you can win? Won't be sat talking to you and didn't think I could win, mate. Like, what you want? Yeah, like, these are the questions I was getting asked yesterday. And I was just like, yeah, I get it. He looks scary looking. I get it. He's from a great gym. He's all into. I ain't intimidated. I ain't scared of fighting anyone. No. And I'm gonna throw down with you, mate. You know. I think, I think from analysing him, especially in this tournament, because it is tough. Yeah. It's, it's new to him as well. Yeah. Obviously, going through this. Listen, you've got a far more trained eye than me. I can see gaps. Yep. So, is it a case of you using all that experience that you've got and just staying patient? until the gap comes and then take it. I say to people about this fight, yeah? Look at my last 10 opponents, look at his last 10 opponents. Mm. You can't even compare him. No. He's not even fought anyone that's fought for that, a title that's, yet. That's like, fair. You know what I'm saying? So, although it looks great on paper, 17 and 0, he might be the next Khabib, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. But we'll find out Friday, won't we? You know what I mean? If he goes in there and throws me on my head a thousand times, congratulations, mate, you are the next Khabib. But guess what? I am not an easy fight and I don't lie down for anyone. And guess what? They just brought my favourite thing back, elbows. Yeah. You just that, yeah. Yeah, we've just brought just one of them. Just announced it today, didn't they? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I've had to do five years without one of my main weapons here to start training them again on the pads for this camp. has been amazing. And everyone knows they're, they're a favoured weapon against wrestlers that I've not been able to use. Do you want to explain that? For people, yeah. because obviously people are used to watching UFC and they're used to seeing elbow finishes, but in the PFL, you've not been able to use elbows at all in any strike. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? In any, you're just not allowed to use elbows yeah, so, in the PFL. So, it's a tournament format. You fight every eight weeks. So, um, the method behind the madness is you don't want to cut. Yeah. Cuts take longer than eight weeks to heal, usually, if it's a bad one. So, they eradicated elbows, but then, you know, you can still get kneed, you can still get kicked. Cuts still happen in the sport. So, I think for the finals, it just makes sense because we're done after this. This is the final hurdle, do you know what I mean? So, I'm glad they brought them back. Um, and I got obviously got told about it during my training camp. Good. So my, my manager rang me and went, "Do some good news. Go on, lad. Yeah, elbows are back. I said, you are lying. Boots are back. Yeah, like Love elbows that. are back. And it makes a big difference for strikers. So also good for him too, for yeah. ground and pound. So it's opened up the rule set and I'm looking forward to it. Mm. He's not a finisher. Yeah. He's a grinder. And he listen, he's very good at what he does. And yeah. you, 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 you know that. But... As I said, the experience, I think, is on your side. You've seen all different shapes, all different sizes, all different things have come at you throughout that 35 pro career, plus all the amateur fights that you've had, yeah. and a couple on the street, mate, you know what I mean? You know how to manage a fight. And I, I was saying to a couple of the guys before, it doesn't matter if round one goes his way, it doesn't matter if round two goes his way. You've been here before. You know to stay patient and the opportunity will, will arise. Yeah, Adam's my coach now. Who can else tell him, Adam? Um, but it's but, true though, isn't it? Come yeah, on, no, let's, be, let's be honest. You, you've been in this situation before. It's, it's like, I, so I look at it, yeah. I remember how I felt when I first fought for that world title, yeah. And I first fought for the million dollar prize in front of it. It's daunting. Yeah. It's daunting for me now. Look how relaxed I am, mate. I'm chilling. My weight's great. My heart rate's 30 beats a minute. There's no stress from me. Like, this is another day at the office for me. I mean, for him, this is his fourth fight in seven months. He's not used to it. This is a five-rounder, you know. We've seen him get tired throughout the season over three. Yeah. Um, and there's pressure on him because, like you say, he comes from a gym. Yeah. There's a lot of successful people in that gym. He's got to live up to the expectation. 
Exactly. D don't, don't get me wrong. He might do. There we go. Exactly. He That's how do. I'm looking at it. But there's going to be a proper fight on Friday night. Like I say, 30 and 5. I've never laid down for anyone. Do you know what I mean? I've been finished once in 35 fights. He's not particularly a finisher. Not saying he can't, but in 17 fights, he's got three finishes. Mm. In 30 wins, I've got 17 knockouts. So if we start doing law of averages. What are you like on fight night? Because you're the main event, as expected. Obviously, the quarter goes just before you. Manchester taking over the oh. main and core men. I mean, that's pretty special out here, isn't it? But there's 15 fights on this. So it's a long night, isn't it, of everything going on in and around you as you're getting ready for your contest. Do you Do thrive you off that or does it... I know you. Would you rather be first on? Yeah, I'd rather be first on. Yeah, get get me it in done. And I hate it, you know. Like, even last night, right, I got my call time. It's around about half 12 here. So I tried to stay up. So I stayed up to, like, 3 a.m. yesterday. Mm. Just trying to retrain the brain because I've been going to bed at, like, 11, 12. So now I'm just trying to stay up a bit. I had a coffee late. Mm. Last thing you want to do is be yawning, mate, on the walkout. So just little things like that. that that's all you can really do, but... Ideally, mate, I'd like to fight him right now. If he was over there now, I'd just like to get Let's out get of the way. On. What's the fucking point in that about? We've had to look at each other for a week in the hotel. It's just like, oh, God. Nodding at breakfast. Yeah, it's all that gear. <laughs> Let's just get it out of the way, mate. Find out. Mm. I'm not going to ask you what's next, because what's next is Friday night. Exactly. So, tell them how this is going to end on Friday night. When Picture they tune in, the zone is the destination if you want to watch this. Obviously, we'll be keeping you up to date on TalkSport. But when you shut your eyes at night, how does this go? And then I'll tell you how I think it goes. If you can't find the time. <laughs> when you start hearing that song going off, yeah, that's the war anthem. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to fight hell for level. And um, by any means necessary, mate, it's a legendary status to have to go through this ringer twice. That means you win eight consecutive fights to be a PFL two-time champion. Yeah. Um, and do you know how many things can go wrong in one fight camp? Never mind eight. To be able to do consecutive eight without pulling out of any of them is an incredible achievement. It'll join me a very elite list of people to ever do it twice. And um, it'll put me down in folklore and history within this organisation. If you stop him, where does it put you on the list of uh, British knockout merchants? I think it's second, isn't it? Yeah. Behind Paul Daly. Oh, no one's beating Paul Daly. You're not catching Paul Daly. 36. But you level at the moment with uh, Mikey B, aren't you? DJ Mikey B, Michael Bispin. If you get a knockout on Friday night, you go one above him. There you go. Adam with the stats back again. But not just that, yeah. Hopefully it finally puts me in them conversations of one of the best UK fighters to you do. You already it. are, mate. But like You already are. Like, you know what I mean? Like like really taken serious with that statement because that means a hell of a lot to me. And that was a main motivation for coming back in to do this thing again. Do you want me to tell you how I think this goes on Friday? Go on. You buy your soul. No, I'm not. You are pretty biased. You, are, you, you have a co-host. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you you're going to get beat, am I? I'll tell you what's going to happen. I think you're going to have a Leon Edwards moment. I think you're going to... I think you're going to be down. And you'll find it. There you go. You heard it here first. There you go. Make sure you tune in. It's going to be awesome. Listen, man. All the best. You deserve it. Go and do you your thing. <laughs>